All right, so hey everyone and welcome to this 90 day challenge again. Uh, we are on the mission number six today. Let me just recap what we did earlier. Uh, we started with the first mission being Dockerit. The second mission, again, we continued with container based images. Third mission was when we talked about uh, how do we set up revision control and Git based workflows, branching models, etc. Mission four was about building continuous integration pipeline. And the last mission, a week before yet last week, was about Cloudify. That's when we got started with AWS. And I have demonstrated how to build a simple two tier infrastructure, secure, scalable infrastructure on AWS. Uh, that was the mission we talked about uh, when we discussed about that. Today's mission and this week's mission is about cloud. Uh, you know, we're going to continue on cloud. And we will talk about something which is very interesting that is about auto scaling. So this mission name is called as auto scalify. And what I'm what we're going to do here is basically uh, set up auto scaling for the web application that we already have. And that is what I will, I'm going to demonstrate to you through this mission. Before that, though, let me welcome everyone. Uh, I see Vijay, Rabindra, Saminda. I also see uh, Ravi, Ashiat, Monica, Sharath, uh, Roshan, Madala, Shiva Prasad, uh, Vijay, again some, you know, Ash, uh, Ashutosh. So welcome everyone to this 90 day challenge. And let's begin with today's agenda here. So what are we talking about? And what we have created, let me just recap very quickly. So during the last mission, when we got started with uh, AWS, we've taken an application and we've built a two tier infrastructure, uh, a secure infrastructure for that as well. And for that, we uh, created a setup such as this. So we started with VPC. That's how you create a secure infrastructure. VPC spans across different availability zones and a region. So we've picked up one region that is Northern California. And we have created four different subnets, two in availability zone B and two in availability zone C. So we're leveraging this scalability, high availability features that AWS gives us um, and regions as well. So geographical locations that we can pick up and uh, we want to span our infrastructure across this. Right now, let's say our web server is in one of the availability zones. We created another layer of subnets here, uh, another dimension, because we wanted to keep some of our infrastructure public, some private. And we deployed a database. Uh, let's imagine this is a multi-AZ kind of an environment. So we deployed that with RDS, which is a managed database service. Now, what we want to do here is uh, uh, scale the web application and create multiple instances of that. And when we scale, we are going to go horizontally, meaning we are going to launch more instances of the same type or maybe different types you can go as well. And we are basically launching multiple instances rather than you have two different ways you can scale. One is a vertical scaling where you can go from a small instance to a medium instance to a large instance to an extra large instance. The problem with the vertical scaling is you will hit a limit sometime. You have a single point of failure and you also will be bound on the network and other kind of uh, things as well, right? So it's not just about compute power that you, may, you will be bound on. So instead of that, if you can work horizontally scale, that gives you an ability to launch like almost like unlimited instances. You can launch thousands of instances if you want. And once you have them set up, you can drive the traffic through some sort of a load balancer. Let's say an application load balancer and so on. So we'll be talking about how do we set up the scaling. This is where we launch auto scaling groups. We will be talking about how do we go about setting up this entire infrastructure and scale the application side of it? And that is going to be a five step process. So let me explain that five step process to you. And then I will demonstrate everything to you as well. Right? So this step five step process starts with an existing instance. And uh, let's say you have configured a web server and 
uh, everything is configured there, right? So your web application is installed. It has been configured to talk to the database. It is fully working for you. And uh, that is what we have as part of our uh, existing environment setup that we have done. And then I'll explain the five step process to uh, create the auto scaling configuration and start scaling this environment. So let's say I am in Northern California region. I'm looking at my EC2 instance. This has been fully configured web server. So it has my PHP application running. It is connected to the database. Database also accepts the connections from this web server or any security group which belongs to that web server. Uh, so this is all working. This is the status we have right now. And the first step process is we take this instance and create an image out of it. The image is a snapshot of an existing instance, right? In fact, I'm going to start doing that right away so that by the time I'm done explaining this process, the image is ready. Creating an image is very simple. So I go to the AMIs, I'm logged into AWS console, I've switched to EC2 and I've picked up the region Northern California where my instance is. And I take that instance and convert it into an image by selecting the instance, going to the instance state or actions and from here, you will see the image and templates from where you're going to pick create image. It's as simple as that. And then provide a name, let's say web, um, provide a description if you want. Uh, generally, this instance will get rebooted. If you don't want that to happen, you select this to be enabled. And you click on create image. Yeah. So what happens now is if you go to the AMIs, you are going to see this image being created. Uh, it is in pending state, right? And you don't have to do anything else. You just select the uh, you know instance, uh, start this process. It start, takes a snapshot. It shuts down the instance for a for a for a little while. Uh, it will take a clean snapshot of that, and that is what is copied to the S3 bucket. So it uses S3 storage to keep that snapshot, right? It's basically a disk snapshot, a root volume snapshot, you can call it. And that is the AMI that it is generating right now. This is the first step towards setting up the auto scaling because with auto scaling, you are basically going to let some tool automation, uh, some sort of a bot you can think of manage your scale for the instances for web servers. And when it has to launch an instance, it has to launch it with full configurations. And that's what we are creating right now. Uh, we give defining the or providing it with an image. And that image is what it is going to launch using a template. So in addition to creating an image, the next step is going to be creating a template. And this template contains all the information about launching the instance. When I show you how I'm creating a template launch template, that is, it is going to look exactly like launching a new instance, uh, just that it doesn't do that. It only creates a template and keeps it ready. And there are four main configurations that you provide. One is the image. Number one is image. Number two is the type of an instance, the size of the instance, the configuration that we are talking about. Uh, number three is the security group. And number four is the key key pair that you want to use to connect to that instance with. And you can provide a few other configurations as well, like, you know, VPCs and uh, disk configurations and whatnot, right? But I'm telling you about the core key configuration that you uh, should provide when you create a launch template. How do you define the launch template? Uh, after I create a launch template, though, uh, I'll just explain this process completely. So after I create the launch template, I would create a target group along with the load balancer. Those are my step number three and four. Earlier, there used to be only the load balancer. And then 
when you launch an instance, you will directly register it with a load balancer. Load balancer used to register it, do the health check, maintain the list of instances which are available and all that. Now that part is being offloaded to the target groups. So load balancer interfaces with the target group very closely, but load balancer does not maintain the list of instances. It does not do the health checks. It doesn't worry about all of that. It just this, you know, does what it is supposed to do. That is load balancing and routing the traffic to the right application. And that's it. And that way one load balancer can also uh, connect with multiple target groups and you can set up like, uh, you know, route based, host based, host name based routing or path based routing. And, you know, you can create an environment where the same load balancer routes to multiple different applications. I'll tell you what I mean here through this example where let's say I have a router. This is how it's going to look like an application load balancer in AWS works like this where it will accept the traffic for different with different host names like api.domain.com and backoffice.domain.com and domain.com slash web and based on the path or based on the host name it is going to route you to the relevant uh, service that is the target group in aws here on the right hand side that's going to be the target group in aws so target group works with the load balancer and the load balancer uh, will just think about routing the traffic and everything is, else is offloaded to the target group in, in, in reality. Now, after this is done, what type of load balancer we will talk about it when we get there. And after this is done comes the order scaling group. You can think of order scaling group as a bot. I generally draw this dancing robot. Uh, that's my favorite. And think of it as a dancing robot if you want. And what it does, auto scaling group is the one which brings everyone together, everything together, right? And that is the reason why we want to do it in certain sequence because this is fifth step in the sequence. When you go to auto scaling group, you must have a launch template. You must, of course, that requires image that you also need to have a target group so that it interfaces with the load balancer. And then you add your policies like, oh, uh, you know, you want to scale based on what? So you have to watch certain metric, typically CloudWatch. Uh, then you define your scale, like what is the minimum number of instances that I want? What is the maximum I, I, I want you to manage? Uh, because you have to put some ceiling, otherwise it will just create thousands of instances. You don't want that to happen. And you define a desire. Desire keeps changing uh, between this range. So desired is something which will basically keep on changing between this range for desired this these are the boundaries and whatever the desired count is that's the count it has to maintain right here and then you define the policies as well if certain threshold crosses or breaches you want to trigger the scaling and there the desired count will keep on changing it will manage the desired count and based on that it will decide how many instances to manage and so on that is how the auto scaling uh, configuration would work. So to get to the auto scaler, you have to go th through this route where you have to configure the image. You have to configure the um, launch template, the target group, the load balancer, and finally the auto scaler. All right. So that is the sequence in which it will happen. Um, all right, so there's a question from Ravi Shankar about uh, launch configuration versus launch template. That's right. So earlier what used to happen was there used to be a configuration called as a, uh, instead of launch template, there used to be launch configuration. Now, this has been replaced with launch template. Now you may ask what is the difference and why it was replaced. The difference is launch configuration exclusively worked with auto scaling group. So only auto scaling group could use launch configuration. No one else could. Good thing about launch template, the newer version, newer replacement of launch configuration, the launch template can be used by you later 
apart from the auto scaling group as well. So you just create a launch template. Let's say you want to launch a particular type of an instance every now and then every two months, you have to launch a particular type of an instance with the exact same configuration. So you don't have to remember that configuration. You don't have to mug up that configuration. You don't have to document that configuration. Just create a launch template and click one button and it launches this instance with the exact same configuration. So you can do it manually. You know, you can use the launch template manually to create instances or you can route it via the auto scaling group and let auto scaler, the bot, do the job for you. Right, so that's the launch template. Uh, and when launch configuration was there, there was also earlier, there was no target group. So target group, launch template are fairly or relatively newer concepts is what I would say. Now comes to uh, actually implementing it. Let's um, let's look at what are what is our status for the image. And I started creating an AMI, uh, which should possibly be ready by now. It is available and uh, with image, you can share this image with others. You can make it private by default. It is private. You can share it with particular accounts. You can uh, select an image and say edit permissions and select specific accounts or organizations which have uh, like umbrella organization, which has multiple accounts or you can make it public as well. That's something you can do. AMIs are specific and scoped to the region. So if you want to deploy the same application in a different region, you will have to create a copy of this AMI. And that is the reason why there is an action copy AMI exists where you have to choose the destination region in which you want to launch or create a copy of that AMI. Once you have that copy with a different ID, you can launch the application the same way in a completely different geography and other part of the world. Right, so that's how uh, this works. Since I have the image now, I'm going to go to the next step, which is creating the launch template. Step number two. Launch template is a, almost similar to launching an instance, but we just say, oh, uh, I just want this configuration now. I don't want to launch an instance, but uh, I may uh, in future or I'll do it through auto scaling group. So I'll show you how launch config template works. And that is the reason why launch template exists in instances versus auto uh, launch configuration was part of auto scaling uh, even on the console. Let me launch, create a launch template here where I'll just define the name of the uh, template. I can also have a version description like oh, initial some version description, right? So this is just my initial version of the web app and uh, mainly four configurations, right? The images. Now, when we define the image, we want to define an image created out of this web application, the one we just created. So that falls under my AMIs. And this is where I see my image that I just launched or created. And I selected that. This is the configuration number one, apart from the name, this is the first configuration out of this four configuration that I talked about AMI type of an instance key and security group. Those are the four important ones. So I select uh, the AMI, the instance type we will stick to the free tier eligible. So T2 micro key pair, the one we created earlier for this um, region. And number four is the security group. which is going to be my web application security group, right? Now, in terms of network configuration, I can provide uh, a particular subnet and so on, but I don't have to do that because when the launch uh, auto scaling group comes in, that is where I can configure which VPC, which subnets, and it will do its job. Uh, so as far as launch template is concerned, I only have to provide four configurations. AMI, instance type, key pair, and security group. And here, I'm just gonna say create launch template, and it's not gonna create an instance, just create a template. And that template then can be converted into an instance by just saying, hey, launch an instance from a template. This is what is new. That's what I was mentioning. You can launch an instance and say, hey, this is my template. 
And this basically plugs in all the configuration that I want. It has everything. And maybe this time I have to use uh, or select a subnet. That's probably all I have to select if I have to, uh, because I want to launch it in a public subnet. So I'll just select public subnet, launch an instance, and I'll have a working instance again. That's how easy it is. Right, so that's uh, uh, how this works. Now, once I have the launch template, let's say this one, the next step is to configure the target groups. So target groups closely associate with uh, are associated with the load balancer. So let me first define the target groups and then talk about the load balancers as well. And that is the reason why you see load uh, target groups, load balancers under the load balancing right here. So if you look at the target groups, this is how I create the target groups. So now what it is made up of. So target groups can be group of instances, can also be a group of IP addresses, can be Lambda functions as well, or can integrate with uh, some load balancers as well. So in this case, we have instances, group of instances as targets. Uh, that's what we're talking about. The targets are the actual targets where the traffic will go and uh, ultimately land up at, and that's gonna be instances. Uh, target groups also maintain the health check of the instances that you uh, launch in the target group. They register with the target group and only if they're healthy will they be available for uh, receiving the traffic. So here I'm going to add uh, a configuration for the health checks as well, it's, which is the default one. Uh, here I'm also going to select the VPC and uh, the listener configuration is gonna be HTTP one because it will accept HTTP one, HTTP two traffic. Uh, you can also use a gRPC if you have, your application supports gRPC protocol and you wanna use it, then you can choose that. But otherwise, HTTP one is safer side. Uh, listener it is, so which port the target group should listen to, right? Um, and uh, send the traffic to. Health checks, you can define a specific you know, health check URL if you have one, or just stick to slash, which is gonna be the root, which means this page. And that's fine with me. Uh, you can also configure the advanced health check options like, oh, how many times it should fail to for it to be declared as unhealthy, for it to be declared as healthy, how long, how uh, to wait for timing out, uh, at what interval you want to do the health check. So those are the advanced settings if you want to change. I'm not changing any, just going ahead with the next one and give it a group name called as demo target group. Our application name is DevOps demo. So this is a demo target group. Selecting the next. Now I already have an instance from earlier. I'll add it to the target group by clicking on include as pending below. This is a must. If you want to use your existing instance and test it maybe uh, and add it to the target group and it is in a running state and it will basically be uh, made available to the load balancer once it comes up. So this target group is now created, but the load balancer is not ready yet. So if I look at the target group, it says unused. And even though it has a target, it is not being used. It's not being added uh, to the load balancing pool because there is no load balancer at all. Only if you have a load balancer, will it basically start marking it as healthy and healthy uh, based on the health checks. Now, let me create a load balancer here. If I go to the load balancer and create one, I see mainly three options. There is one more hidden classic load balancer. We don't use it uh, because that is only for legacy purposes. So today we either use a application load balancer or a network load balancer. Now gateway load balancer is for a very specific purpose. We don't typically use it. It's mainly for some third party virtual appliances and so on. Uh, we don't need to worry about that much. We either have TCP applications and we want to connect to TCP port directly, or we may use HTTP, HTTPS based routing, uh, host based routing, where we can do more intelligent things like um, name based routing, path based routing. This is under HTTP routing. 
So if you want to use this and for most of the microservices, you would do that. You are going to create an application load balancer. Only if you want to send traffic to the TCP port directly. So some application which doesn't work over HTTP, HTTPS, and you want to connect to the TCP or maybe another application where uh, you care more about the performance, absolutely high performance, but you don't want to worry about or you don't need the features that HTTP offers, uh, you may want to choose the network load balancer in such case. But most of the scenarios you, for microservices, you are going to pick the application load balancer, also short named as ALB. So you have ALB versus NLB. And the classic load balancer used to be called as a, uh, is called a CLB now, or it used to be ELB, then it became CLB and so on. So what we use is the application load balancer. That's what we're going to create. And uh, here it's going to be an internet facing because what we are doing here is sending traffic to the web servers, which are part of the public subnet right now. So these are public facing web servers anyways right now. So for that reason, uh, you could create a public load balancer. So when we talk about the web servers here, all of these are uh, public facing and this is an internet facing load balancer. So that's what I'm creating here. The load balancer name as demo ALB. It is an internet facing load balancer. Use this IPv4, we're happy with that right now. Uh, choose the VPC. Select the subnets because when you create a load balancer, you can limit it to particular subnets also if you want to. Right, and here you want to select the public subnets only, not the private one. So just public subnet, two public subnets I have selected both. For the load balancer, you need its own security group. If you don't have one, you may want to create it. Since I did not have one, I'm creating a security group for it. Uh, why not use the one for the web application? Uh, is because, again, uh, we want to restrict the access and all that based on the security group, that's one. Uh, secondly, we don't want to expose SSH port through load balancers and so on. So we're not doing that. And for that reason, it makes sense to create its own security group for just the load balancer, where since I have only HTTP application, I will open that port, HTTP port here. To all, because this is a public facing load balancer. And the same security group is what I'm gonna select by refreshing it here. This one security group that is load balancer, uh, protocol port, Target group is how it interfaces with the actual instances. So because load balancers don't care about the actual instances, it is the target group which is taking care of that. So when you create a load balancer, you have to define which target group you want to send this traffic to. And here you can do multiplexing, like you know, you can add multiple routes, multiple listeners, and route the traffic accordingly. Even with this one listener, you can have multiple rules and define uh, if the host name is this, send it to this target group and uh, so uh, vice versa, right? So you can add more uh, groups like that, configurations like that. And this is it. So I'm creating a load balancer here. Uh, it's yet to be created. It's gonna take some time and see the resource map, which is a good feature now. So this is a listener, the uh, load balancer listener, which will send it to the target group. Target group has one instance right now, which has uh, this, you know, this particular target, as in this instance on port number 80, that's the target. This is a target group, this is the actual instance. So I have at least one instance, which is part of uh, where the traffic is going in. And when I start scaling, you are going to see more instances added to the, uh, to this targets as well. So this is a new feature that AWS has now. So we have listeners and rules. I'm gonna refresh this now. 
here and once the load balancer is ready it still says provisioning i should be able to test it by going to its uh, domain name dns url so this will show up once the load balancer is ready now after this is done the last part remains uh, about auto scaling groups only auto scaling group accepts the configuration uh, so you have to define multiple configurations here if you define some metric some policy uh, if you define the scale minimum maximum desired you can add a policy and then based on that it will start scaling so how do you add the configuration for auto scaling group let me walk you through that step by step so i'm going to the auto scaling group this is where you can create a auto scaling group from this is part of ec2 so you go to ec2 auto scaling and start creating one i'm going to call, call it as demo asg so this is where everything comes in right so basically it brings everything together and then it starts managing the scale so first it needs the launch template so it asks for the launch template here you can see it is a five or seven step process so you add a launch template launch options some advanced options the group size is that minimum maximum desired uh, you can add notifications and policies and so on so the second uh, part after adding a launch template is going to be defining this network and vpc this is where i said when you create the launch template it's not mandatory to provide the vpc and subnets you can always add it later and that later is here so here i'm going to select the public subnets only so these are my two public subnets that i've selected so auto scaling group will only launch it in these subnets and that's what we want the web server should only come up in the public subnet of this vpc that's what we're defining here and you can also overwrite the templates as in you can create different instance types as well so now aws supports mixing and matching different types of instances you can have a t2 micro let's say if this has a weightage of you know one or five this has a weightage of 10 so it's twice the number and let's say t2 large this has a weightage of 20 so if basically if you create one instance of this it is going to launch two instances of this type or maybe four instances of this type right so it can create a mix and match configuration as well okay i'm not doing it but i'm just showing you the configuration here the instance type we want to stick to t2 micro only which is free tier eligible now i'm going to the next configuration here advanced option is where we select the load balancer so we say attach to existing load balancer but when we actually define the configuration it's not the load balancer configuration it is the target group only it is the target group that our scaling group connects with an order scaling group will manage the targets here and through this it will connect to the load balancer that is how the connections work the order load balancer is connected to target group and auto scaling is managing the scale here and as soon as it gets added and gets registered with the target group the load balancer will come in and start routing the traffic so that's how this works so all we have to do is select the load balancer here uh, define the health checks if you want go to the next and this is where we define the minimum maximum and desired so you define a range of values so what is the minimum capacity that you want minimum guaranteed capacity let's say i want two or let's just say one instance as a minimum uh, max is five and my desired capacity is two what this means is it will maintain at least one instance it will start with two though and based on the scaling policy scale out and scale in policy that i have it will decide whether to create more or delete some to match that capacity requirements at the current moment so that is driven by the policy so we are just defining the uh, scale here minimum maximum and what do you start with and based on the situation it will either scale up scale down so you can define the scaling policy uh, either cpu utilization based or maybe 
request count per target and so on. So a good policy here for us to choose is request count per target because this is going to help us benchmark, right? So if this type of an instance with this configuration, uh, it is easy to benchmark how much load it can take without affecting the uh, quality of the service. And based on that, you can benchmark the capacity of the instance. Let's say this can take about 500 um, you know, request per second each instance. So if you are getting 3000 requests, you need six instances of that type. So it is easy, it is easy predictable if you uh, benchmark your application and come up with this kind of a uh, request count per target. And then I'm selecting the target group here, target value as 500. So if it crosses or breaches 500 mark, it will start scaling out. And similarly, it will have a scaling down policy as well. Right. So uh, by default, it will create a scale in that is scale down policy as well. And you can disable that behavior from here. I'll wait for a few minutes for the warm up. Warm up as in within this time, it will not create another scaling event. And that is useful because if your instance takes and for EC2 instances scaling, this is important because if your instance takes two minutes to come up and be ready and to start serving traffic, you don't want to just watch 30 seconds and scale up again and again and again. You have to give it time for it to be active and ready and start receiving the traffic before you decide to scale again. So this is typically three, five minutes interval or so. That's a good uh, interval. Since we are just testing it here and we want to we want things to happen quicker, I'm selecting a shorter interval. And you can define a policy like, oh, uh, you want to launch and terminate you can terminate and launch or something like that. So that's a policy, which is a new thing now, instance maintenance policy. Going to the next one, uh, I'm not adding any notification. Uh, notifications would mean you will start receiving the emails on the scaling event. And it uses a specific service called as SNS, a uh, simple notification service that AWS has to send those emails out. I'm skipping that. And going to the next one, reviewing everything. Uh, I can add some tags, tags for the name, maybe. So every instance that I create will be tagged with this. And this is just a review of all the configuration. So the multiple configurations starting with launch template the network with VPC and public subnets, uh, load balancer through the target group. And then, uh, yeah, that's all here right now. The scaling uh, group size desired is two, minimum is one, max is five. We define a policy. If the request count breaches 500, it's gonna start scaling in, scaling out, and uh, it will create a scale down policy accordingly. All right, now I create the auto scaling group. I would also go and check the load balancer status by now it should be ready. And since the load balancer is ready, this should show me the application because I have one instance, should have one instance registered with it. Just gonna check this. So I see a target group. This target group has uh, uh, still says unused. Mm, that's interesting. No, it has one instance which is in healthy state. So this is good. And uh, since it is healthy available, uh, this should all be working. And now you see uh, the load balance auto scaling group has added two more instances. Those instances will be available in a few seconds. All right, this is the load balancer public URL. I'm waiting for this to actually show me the actual uh, application. It should.
All right, I'm going to check the security group tag and just make sure that the security group has been configured properly. Uh, this is where I have a problem. So generally you sh should not be touching the outbound rules. Outbound rules should remain at this basically. So can I delete it? If in case, if you do this mistake, you add all TCP or all ports rather. So all traffic anywhere is the outbound rule. It's supposed to have that rule as a default because you don't want to restrict what is going out. Uh, only what is coming in is what we are restricting right now. If you want to do that, you have to be more careful if you want to restrict outgoing traffic. Uh, in this case, just want to open as such a HTTP port for everyone. This being a load balancer. And uh, this seems correct. This seems okay. And the application is up via the load balancer. So it's all working fine now. So if I go back to load balancer, I should see everything working. So this is where I was actually, I ignored it, but it was already showing it. What was the problem, which is a good thing. This resource map is a newer feature of AWS. Very interesting, very useful. You also see a similar resource map with VPC. Uh, again, a very useful feature to visualize how your VPC looks like, how many public subnets, how many private subnets are there. You can see it here. There's a resource map for VPC. So how many of these are public subnets? How many are private subnets? So you can figure out from here. You can see which internet gateway it is attached to, which route table it is attached with, etc. The same with here. So this exactly shows you how the traffic is gonna get routed. From here to the target group, from the target group to the instances, it's just gonna keep on load balancing right now. So I see three instances. Out of that, the two were created by autoscaler. And now that I have autoscaled instances, I can delete my previous instance for. So I'm just gonna terminate that. I don't need it. I already have enough capacity and it is being managed by the autoscaler. So why bother launching a manual instance now? So the job is done. I have uh, uh, two instances created by autoscaler and I can go to the autoscaler and figure out uh, all these details. So this autoscaler shows me this is the desired, this is the minimum, this is the maximum. Uh, you can see the activity. This is launching two instances right now. And then the scaling policy should be somewhere here. Yeah, so add or remove as required is what it says. And for that, it is looking at request count for the load balancer request count per target. And that means it is looking at the load balancer here. And it has the monitoring details. And one of the useful thing is request count per target. Right now, let me start sending some requests. If I put this on auto refresh for every three seconds, it is every three seconds it refreshes this page, meaning it will send about 20 requests per minute. So 0.33 per second, uh, 20 requests per minute. And uh, that's what you will see somewhere here. The number of requests coming in will show up here. And I think target group has some stats here. How many hosts are healthy, unhealthy? Uh, target group is maintaining the requests per target. So it is scaling based on this. We're getting like, you know, very few requests. I just made a few requests earlier, right? So if I wait for a minute, I'm going to see about 20 requests per minute. This data that I see is for one minute. This one, right? So you're going to start seeing that uh, here. And it already has the scaling policies in place where if it breaches 500 requests per second per instance, it is going to start scaling up. 
this is being monitored from a service called as CloudWatch. So you can also go to CloudWatch and see all these alerts and auto scaling policies in place. So you see that alarm. And if I look at all alarms, uh, you do see a couple of alarms being set here. This one says OK. And if it is above 500 for three data points, that is for three minutes actually, it will start scaling up. That's what it says right now. And this one, if it remains below 450 requests per second for about 15 data points, so about 15 minutes, it will start scaling down. So those are the policies that you see are in place already. And uh, you can see that threshold here, this 500 threshold is not being crossed because I just have very few requests right now. Even if you look at from, let's say, this graph, target groups, the number of requests, request uh, per target. Now you're gonna see about 20 requests per minute. So it's gonna reach that number very soon, but it's much below our threshold of 500. Uh, to breach this threshold, you need to have some sort of a load test. So I'm just gonna generate a load test against this load balancer uh, using Docker. I already have a Docker instance somewhere. And from here, I'm gonna run a load test. So you'll see, I'll create a load test using one of my containers. I use a load test container to do this. It runs a application, Linux application called as Siege. If you want to do something like this, I will share the command with you. Okay, uh, Ravi Shankar has a question. So request count per target, what does that mean? Per target is per instance. Uh, so basically what this means is it is going to look at uh, the requests are being spread across the instances. It is just load balancing. So you're going to see if I receive 1000 requests and if I have two instances, you're going to see request count per target is 500, right? So it is going to look like that. So based on that like average request or request count per target, uh, that's a good idea because then we can benchmark it. And if you have a uh, load balancer, which is evenly scaling, this works really well. So all the metrics could be latency or Number of requests coming in doesn't make sense because if you have multiple instances, then that metric doesn't make sense. Number of requests per target makes more sense. Latency makes a lot of sense because latency is like universal thing. Average CPU utilization makes a lot of sense a lot of times. And those are some of the metrics you want to, want to use for scaling. Now you see this is climbing, but this is still under 20, right? It's not going to breach 500 unless you have some sort of a load test running. And that's what I'm going to launch now. So what I'm doing now is launching a load test using an application called as Siege. So it just creates a container. That's part is just creating container. Uh, the real load test starts from here. Siege with some concurrent connection like five runs in a benchmark mode, meaning it will just keep on bombarding with thousands of requests. Uh, and then let's say for 10 minutes and then against what uh, against my load balancer URL is what I'm going to send this traffic. Uh, let's say this one. So it's going to run for 10 minutes and you after a minute or two, you are definitely going to see this request count spiking up. And as per our policy, after three minutes, it will start scaling. So we'll have to wait for a few minutes for the actual result of our auto scaling to show up.
So we'll be watching this graph. Uh, we'll also watch the chart from here where we are going to see this in an alarm state. So right now this is in okay state and it, it is you know set to scale down in 15 minutes as of now. But the moment it sees, sees traffic and this starts spiking up, uh, the picture is gonna change. So this is currently generating at the interval of one minute. You can see it's quite low. It's about 20 requests per minute for the last few. Yeah, 20 requests because I'm refreshing it every three seconds. So 20 requests in a minute. Uh, that's what you see right now here. But uh, once the load test starts, this picture will change. The load test has already started, uh, which you can monitor from here. You're only going to see preparing right now, but at the end of the 10th minute, you will actually see the result, complete result for the load test. Uh, what you're going to see now is in a minute, you'll see the effect of the load test and this spiking up. So this request count will definitely start shooting up. If you have any questions, I'll take them in the meanwhile. Uh, do not send me the private messages. You can ask the questions directly in the chat room here. Uh, so I have a question from Mohammed Sarfraz about, uh, okay, so this is the first time you're joining. Uh, if you are a member, I would recommend you join our Thursday evening session. Um, so Thursday nine o'clock session is when I will help you get oriented. And if you have any questions, you can connect with me. We generally do a zoom call uh, for the community of members and you can connect there and I'll guide you. But uh, for now you stick to our uh, 90 day challenge is what I would say. And when you log in to our portal, that is schoolofdevops.com. And if you are logged in, you will see the dashboard, which has the uh, 90 day challenge uh, right there. I'm just going to log in and show you. Uh, in the background, you should see the request count spiking up. You see, this was 20. Now it has spiked up to what? 400 plus. And uh, this should go above 500 for it to scale, really. Right? So we'll have to wait till that happens. Even here, has it breached is the question. Uh, it has breached the red threshold mark. You can see that. So it's going to scale. If it remains like this for three minutes, it will scale. Uh, coming back to surplus question, you stick to the ongoing challenge, which is the 90 day challenge. And it's, if you just follow this and complete the steps here, uh, this should get you started with uh, everything that you need for now. Uh, that's Safra's question. So there is a question from Wellington. Uh, when are other missions going to be published? I joined the challenge late and organized the schedule. Okay, so we have uh, missions being published step by step. So, so far, I have kind of published till Pipeline it and Cloudify. There are some changes I'm going to bring in here. And we are at Autoscalify right now and that mission i'm going to work on uh, it uh, this week basically and most likely by next week or so you'll have you'll see everything being published till order scalify uh, in a few days from now so but gitify containerize docker it is already there pipeline it and cloudify is i'm going to add some exercises here that's what is remaining now so should you should see it sometime this week or so all right, next question is from Ravi. What is gRPC protocol? Can you shed some light on how it is different from HTTP 1.2? So gRPC, with HTTP, you generally make uh, get request, put request, post request, and so on. So if you have to keep a communication open and if you have to make multiple calls, right, you have to keep on running get, 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 get multiple times, like thousand times, let's say. So instead of doing that and initiating that communication and doing the handshake every time, you open up a longer running connection with gRPC. And instead of doing get, 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 you just say, okay, I start the connection and now I'm communicating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
and that continues right so you don't have to do the hand check and you you know you remove that need of doing that every time with every request that is grpc essentially um and there are certain applications which support grpc protocol versus certain which don't uh, so based on that you have to pick whether you uh, need grpc or not that's application specific Okay, so request per target me. Okay, so we have already spoken about that. Uh, what is the request count uh, per target and why we want to use it. Let's go back to our load test and see how we are doing. It's been a couple of minutes or oh, it's come down. Let's see why one, two, three. After three minutes, we should have started scaling. There should be an effect of scaling, hopefully. Uh, that's what I'm gonna assume. So. Okay, I hope this is correct, this is correct. Or I'm looking at a different uh, chart. Let's watch this one. Because this is what it is scaling on based on, uh, definitely, right? So how many instances are there? Okay, so it was just waiting for the next count. It has not yet come down uh, because the scaling should have triggered by now. Let's see, going back to EC2, looking at our scaling groups and uh, it is updating the capacity now still at two uh, desired is two one is uh, one five so look at the activity yes it is launching a new instance and you will see why this is a result of that alarm triggered a policy target tracking policy change the desired capacity from one to two. Oh, it had scaled down actually from one to one and now it has changed to two and that's the reason why it uh, created that because you see that it scaled down already after 15 minutes of not getting enough request it had scaled it down and then it started scaling up again because it realized that now okay uh, there's more load and it needs more instances that's what happened that's why you see two but then you have one instance which was terminated and now it has started scaling out again and after let's say two minutes or so if it still remains at the same level it will keep on continuing to scale up from there on so we'll have to watch for some more time to see the next activity next scaling activity that is Right, so this is an alarm state, you can see that, which means let's cross the threshold. And how long it remained on alarm state and how long it was active, you can see that red, uh, you know, red chart and the green one. So currently it is okay, earlier it was in alarm state, meaning it was below this threshold for more than 15 minutes, meaning it triggered an alarm to scale down. That's what happened here. This is opposite this was okay till here and then it asked us to scale based on uh, the current situation okay looks like the i uh, will wait for a few more seconds to see what's going on but the load may have come down how much we'll have to figure out so it is below this line red line which means it will not scale further if it doesn't need to scale further, it would not. Yeah, the load looks manageable. The request count is about 400. If I had set it to like 300 something or 200, uh, it would have definitely scaled up. It will not now because it doesn't need to. Uh, we are well within our threshold capacity is fine. And uh, that's the reason why it's going to stick to this right now. But you add more load, <coughs> maybe more concurrent connections, it will start scaling up from here as well. But that's about scaling, that's about auto scaling, how it works. And if I wait enough again, it will start uh, scaling down as well. So that's how the scaling is going to work basically. This is how auto scaling works. 
and uh, that's pretty much I wanted to talk about for this week. And uh, this is something uh, you are you can try as well. So you watch this video or the recording, and um, just try the same thing out step by step, and uh, you should be able to you know get to that auto scaling part as well, right? Uh, I will only share this load test, which could be useful for you. Apart from that, everything else you can follow from this video itself. All right. Yep, so I've shared the load test and um, this will continue to remain at this capacity in my opinion. Yeah, you can see this is the green again, which means oh, this is all fine. It will only scale down from here after 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, it will since it has reached here again. And that's it. So that's how the auto scaling works and you can add more policies. It works in combination. So you have multiple policies, anything gets triggered, it will take an action based on that. Right. So that's how it, it works. So Ravi asks, uh, uh, will this be available on YouTube? Yes, it would be. So I will be uploading the recordings, uh, all the recordings on YouTube. So just subscribe to the YouTube channel that is School of DevOps if you haven't already. Uh, so anyone who's not a member but wants to get access to the recording, just subscribe to this channel that is uh, School of DevOps. We'll be publishing the recordings for the last week's session or last session and this week, this session. Uh, together. I've just been uh, occupied with some personal stuff uh, for the last two weeks, so I was not able to catch up on that. But uh, this week, I should be able to post uh, the recordings for this session and the previous one as well and make it available to all of you. But that's auto scaling for you, folks. And uh, that is our mission number six. That's all you have to do. You can see the result of the test. Uh, we got 100% marks. That's great. You know, because we didn't generate a lot of load, uh, only 7,000 requests it looks like. So if I had added more concurrent connections, uh, that would have probably spiked the load up a little bit and um, given us more uh, of scale, right? So right now, this all looks like fine. These uh, instances are able to manage this. And this is how you can also benchmark. You keep on running these kind of tests and then you'll hit a, uh, you know, hit, hit hit a threshold where you will see the availability going down. You will see the response time going up. That is latency. And uh, that happens. You know that, oh, it's kind of the performance is degrading. And now uh, it cannot take any more requests and, you know, cannot handle it very well. So that's when you know that, oh, I've breached uh, the limit. And that's my sweet spot. And I want to keep it under that, right? So that's how you want to do the test. This was a very simple load test though. Uh, you can create more elaborate tests and based on your workflows and how you use your actual application and all that uh, to get a more accurate and realistic results as well. All right. So Hemant asks how to become a member. Um, you can join our nerd membership. We generally give this offer during the webinar sessions. So I'm publishing that right now. And uh, this is a yearly membership uh, that I'm giving an access to right now or giving an offer for. And the it's a one-time investment of about 9999 uh, for a year. And uh, the regular price is about 11999 right now. And you get access to all of our courses plus these live challenges. Uh, you get access to our membership community where we also do the uh, weekly calls with the members and these are typically zoom calls where you can come and ask questions uh, get guidance and uh, we share some knowledge uh, every week for you all right so that's how you can get this offer the offer will be there for a few more minutes so if you want to get the deal you can click on it right now you see that on the screen uh, here and um, you know you can uh, join the membership program as well all right so that's about this week's session. Next week, we will come back and talk about another interesting topic that is about Terraform. So we have the mission called as Terraformalize. Post that will Kubernetesify, will ergodize, and then will 
monetize as well. So that's the sequence we will follow uh, to build our application and uh, set up our 90 day, complete our 90 day challenge. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week and uh, all the best with this mission. Bye-bye.